Welcome to another Chapter 6 example with centripetal acceleration. Now this example is one that we normally do an in-class demonstration with. Um, we, we've seen this before with the dart launcher example from the projectile motion chapter. But what we normally do is we have a turntable. So um, if you have vinyl records at home, this is the thing that plays those records, that spins around at a rotation rate or angular speed of 78 RPM. Now we have seen this unit before, so it's worth making sure we recognize that RPM means revolution per minute. So although it is a unit for omega, it is not our standard unit. We do want to make sure that we put that right away into our standard units. So one revolution is two pi radians, and one minute has 60 seconds. So we will plug all that into our calculator and get 8.17 radians per second. Just to make sure we see what happened, revolutions cancel, we have radians. Minutes on the bottom and the top cancel, we have seconds. All right, so a penny is sitting on a turntable. And the key thing here that is part of the in-class experiment is we put it at different radius um, values away from the center. And at a value of five centimeters, the penny slips off. It goes flying off because friction is not able to hold it in place. At four centimeters, the penny slips off. It's not able to be held in place. At three centimeters, it still um, slides off. At two centimeters, it sits there. And so we check in between two and three at 2.5 centimeters, and we're not going to get more nuance than that. But at 2.5 centimeters, the penny is just barely able to stay in place. So what we are saying, and this is the part that is the um, modified in-class experiment. In words, I am describing what this value is trying to tell us. What we are trying to say is we are at the breaking point of static friction because if we go any further out, static friction cannot hold the penny in place. So we are at the static friction breaking point. That is very obvious when we do this actual experiment in class. I don't have those materials here, so we just kind of have to talk it out. But we are at the static friction breaking point, and that is what allows us to have a solvable problem. Um, so when I say breaking point, I also mean the maximum value. So we have seen this kind of situation before, not with circles, but just with static friction that we're looking at how the maximum value is used in a particular problem. So that happens at a radius of 2.5 centimeters. If we look at the units, we know that we need to have meters. So we have 0 0.025 meters. And again, the reason we've done this is to cancel out the centimeters unit and have the meters unit here. OK. so. As with the problems that we have seen all throughout this section of chapter six, we do want to draw a free body diagram of the penny right at this spot. So we have for the penny gravity straight down, the normal force straight up, and we have friction. Now, really important, and this gets to one of the lecture videos um, that I think is after this example, when we talk about fictitious forces and what we feel compared to what our equations say. So you might not have seen it yet, but you will soon. There is a common misunderstanding of where friction has to point to keep this penny in place. This penny will not circle all by itself, there has to be a force pointing inwards to cause that centripetal acceleration pointing inwards. That force is friction. 
Friction is not pulling the penny away from the center. Even though if we imagine ourselves on a merry-go-round, we often feel like we're being flung outwards. But that is not a real force that is happening. It is our experience of trying to move in a straight line and being forced to rotate in a circle. So we'll see more of that when we get to the section 6.4 lecture video. But for now, what we recognize is that friction is the force that is causing this circular motion. And so when we write down the net force in the x direction is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration, there's a couple of things we have to recognize. First of all, friction, we have always needed to solve for the normal force first if we are not given that number value friction. So we do need to recognize that we'll have to look in that direction, even though there's no circle, so it's not moving in that direction, there's no acceleration in the y direction, in the y direction. So we have the normal force minus gravity, simply because there are no other angled y forces. And so the normal force is equal, just to, as a reminder, gravity is mg. The normal force is equal to mg in this situation. I continued, even with a couple of notes throughout the lecture video, I continued to see on problem sets and um, test one, that we kind of default to just assuming that these are equal and opposite when we're confused. We need to recognize that it is always based on what forces we have in the free body diagram, and it's only if there's really just these two forces in the y direction that this ends up looking like this. Okay, so back to the forces in the x direction. It is just friction and acceleration in the centripetal sense can be written as v squared over r, or it can be written as r omega squared. And if we look, we have omega and r, so we should choose the one that makes our lives easier, r omega squared, radius times angular speed squared. And you'll notice, you probably have by now, that we have not given the mass of a penny. Technically, that is something we could look up. A penny has a defined mass. But the key thing is friction is mu times the normal force, which in this particular situation is mu times mg, which means helpfully for us, the mass is going to cancel. So we haven't given it because it ends up canceling. All right, so I am going to slide down the page a little bit to give us a little more breathing room. And I am going to start to plug in the numbers that we have. So first of all, we're going to divide both sides by mass because we don't have it and it shows up in equal amounts everywhere. So the mu value that we want is equal to 9.8. No, mu times 9.8 <laughs> is equal to the radius, which in this case is 0.025 times omega squared, 8.17 squared. So we divide both sides by 9.8. And keep in mind, before we even plug any of this into our calculator, we know the range of reasonable mu values is supposed to be between 0 and 1. And so when we calculate that mu is 0 0.17, that should seem within the realm of possibilities. Um, mu has no units, and so we end up with a value that is between 0 and 1, and so it's reasonable to us. The trick here is that when we do this in class, the penny is already pretty smooth, and we actually put it on a piece of paper that has a ruler drawn out on it, and so it's really a smooth surface interacting with smooth paper surface as well. So this small number value is actually pretty expected when we actually see the example in class. All right, so when we look back at this example, 
I want us to recognize that the problem-solving process continues to be identical to the previous two examples. We have a drawing, a list of the given information that has been put into the correct units. Once we start to think about forces, we also need a free body diagram. And then we look at where the forces are pointing. We're trying to find the forces that are pointing in the direction of the center of the circle. That's the centripetal acceleration. In this case, we managed to just have the one force. And so if you are making that list that I've mentioned now twice, because uh, I forgot it in one of the videos, this would be a new thing to put in your list as a situation that we have seen. Friction was the only force in the F net discussion for the direction of the circle motion. There were other forces certainly that came up here, but they were not in the direction of the circle. So that list, we will continue. We have had a list up until now. And so I just want to make sure that we can start to see the parallels because every single chapter, as soon as you start to see the parallels and these examples start to feel very similar and familiar to each other, that's when you can feel that things are starting to click and make full sense. So I will see you in more examples so that we can hopefully get to that point where things are clicking and making sense. See you in those next videos.